just say to yourself, you made a terrible mistake. If you did not come to India or the West Indies, I would have been still living on the trees. Well, look at me now. You came, you took me off the trees. <laughs> you gave me clothes. You gave me tie. You gave me trousers. I learned to wear socks. I learned to wear shoes. I wear a belt. By the time I take that off, a woman is bound to change her mind. <laughs> In Africa, we were there on the trees, playing with our bananas. <laughs> you came to Africa, and you brought us down. Now look at you. In Africa, we could sit on the tree and watch our women going about their business. No clothes on. Listen to the white man. That's primitive. That's primitive. You know why? When he saw a black woman half naked, he got an erection. <laughs> and then they brought us to England. And when you want to see a woman in the nude, you get to go to Soho and you get to pay. In Africa, it's free. In England, you get to pay. The white man is stupid. Absolutely stupid. In Africa, in England, when you want to relax, the white man digs 16 holes, not one, 16. Got a piece of stick, get a little white ball, stands up like a homosexual, and he pops it, and he says he's relaxing. In Africa, when the Africa wants to relax, he digs a big hole, gets a piece of a wood, and he beats the ground. The white man says, look at him, he's primitive. You white people are something else. You're really primitive. Look at you. Look at you. When God made this world, he made all of us white. Didn't like the color, so he decided to paint. When he came to Europe, the paint ran out. Look at you. Every time the sun comes out, the white man is out there, lying in the sun, trying to get my color. <laughs> doesn't stop there. He stays for two weeks here. Where does he go? Spain. He lies on the beach. And then when he comes back, he looks nice. Especially the women. When they come back with a suntan, listen to white men. My God, she looks sexy. Now, she's only suntan, and she looks sexy. I am black all the time. <laughs> hey, 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 come here. England's last hope. <laughs> Any questions? Come on, honky, let's hear you. Uh, I'm a racist. I call him a honky, he calls me a racist. They've been calling us niggas for 400 years. What are you? He's gone deaf. <laughs> See, the white man has called us all the names. We were coolies, we were slaves, we were colonials, then we became British, then we got our independence. Now listen to this. Listen to the number of ways we have been transformed. And according to Rousseau, that great French philosopher, he said that all men are born free. But because of the economic systems of the world, man is in chains. Yet that honky gets annoyed when I call him a honky when his people gave me independence. Who took it away? How can you give me something when I was born free? How can you give me my freedom, white man? And when I call you a honky, I am being nice. You're lucky I didn't call you a motherfucker. <laughs> and when I call Americans a motherfucker, I'm only making you feel at home because that's the language you're accustomed to. White man, your days are numbered. <laughs> Look at him. Have you got anything to say? You don't. You're an American. Yes. You've got all the big bombers 
the Noel. You're bombing the whole world. In the Lebanon, they have a little thing called the car bomb. You were asked, can't deal with that. <laughs> One little car bomb, and the bastards are running. <laughs> They've got a satellite up there where you can see a number plate of a car in Oxford Street. They decided to bomb Gaddafi. You know where they bomb? The French Embassy. <laughs> <laughs> when they were in Vietnam, instead of uh, bombing Hanoi, they bombed Cambodia. <laughs> These bastards. <laughs> <laughs> and when they were in Vietnam, listen to the Americans, we are there to fight communism. Ladies and gentlemen, communism is a philosophy. You can shoot or you can't bomb a philosophy. <laughs> if you want to get rid of a philosophy, you got to come up with a better philosophy. Oh, and if it's communism they're worried about, why don't they go where it starts from? <laughs> Moscow. They're going to bust your ass. <laughs> <laughs> and when they were in Vietnam, they were there for so long, Every time you read the New York Times, what do you read? 10,000 Viet Cong killed. American losses not severe. Next day you read 200,000 Viet Cong killed. American losses unidentified. Add it up. By the time they were there, according to their own propaganda, they had killed twice the population of Vietnam. Who the fuck were you fighting? <laughs> <laughs> and these are the people who are going to defend me when the Russians come. Bravo. <laughs> Bravo. Grow up, my friend, grow up. You Americans have a lot to answer for. A lot. What are you doing in Cuba? You're not in Cuba? So where is Guantanamo Bay? Yeah, where your mother comes from, yes. He doesn't know that the Americans have a base in Cuba, which is called Guantanamo Bay. You didn't know that? Shit. And you know what one American told me last week? Oh, Guantanamo Bay is not part of Cuba because the Americans are there. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I said to him? If the Russians were in Florida, can we say that Florida is not part of America? You know, see what I mean? See what? I just talk. I just don't shout, please. Don't shout. You're in my country, please. <laughs> You're not in America now. Do it like us. Make yourself be clear and understood. If you have to shout, then fine. But don't shout. You're in my country. And if you get me angry, I'll call a black policeman to put you out. <laughs> No, my friend, you see, that's what I said to you earlier. You see, in England, I can joke about things. I have a sense of humor. You see, in England, you don't have to call an Englishman a bastard. You just say your behavior is unbecoming of a gentleman. <laughs> will never, ever develop that intellect to display the command of the English language by being so polite and yet being offensive. No, no, don't apologize. Don't do it again. <laughs> now, your question was, and you see, I don't deviate. I know what I'm doing. I mean, my teacher was an Arab. <laughs> they had an empire. Give me time. 
The Egyptians had a great empire. So did the Greeks. So did the Romans. So did the English. It all went. The, Amer the American Empire has gone even before it started. <laughs> you ask the question, how did Cuba get its independence? See, earlier I was giving a long lecture about what independence means. My brother, how can you give me my independence without implying that you took it away? <laughs> America fought Spain to free Cuba, then they put Batista inside and Castro had to get rid of Batista. My friend, who gave you the right to fight Spain for Cuba? Did you Americans not steal success from the Mexicans? Go to East LA. All the architectural works are of Spanish origin. East LA was part of Mexico. How did it become America now? Don't call me sir. In England it's spelled C U R. Say Mr. Speaker. Yeah, say speaker. It's alright, Terry. You see, you don't have a humor, your wife is getting angry back. <laughs> I hear I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Are you from Virginia? <laughs> I can't hear you. Would you like to come a little closer? Why not? It wouldn't touch you that far. <laughs> You see, my friend, don't talk about giving people this independence. You don't. Because if I say to you, and let me use an analogy I know, and the best one which is relevant for you so you can understand what I am trying to say. In any civilized society, when you go to that country, and you see what's going on, if you don't like it, all you have to do is leave. Right? You agree? You wouldn't agree with that. I know why you wouldn't agree with that. Because when you white refugees from Europe, who were starving in Europe and Ireland, because of racial and political oppression and religious, you went to America, you didn't accept the Indian way of life. You change it. Is that right? It's right. So when I come to England, I have a right to change England and make it look like Pakistan. <laughs> ah, he says, if you have the strength, and if you have the votes, and if you have the numbers, you can do it. My friend, suppose hypothetically, I ask the Indian government to lend us a hundred million Indians for one year. <laughs> In election year. <laughs> Pakistani leaders. <laughs> Would that be right? <laughs> to get Indians and Pakistanis to agree on anything? My friend, in America you can't get Protestants and Catholics to agree on anything. The Pope was there last week. <laughs> Every time I bring a point up, he's telling me about the divisions between Pakistanis and Indians. As if to say that white people all agree all the time. Go to Northern Ireland. <laughs> They've been disagreeing for 855 years. North Russia, Gordon, Scotland. And they're killing each other. It's not a pity. Who planted the Protestants there? The English. They took the Protestants from Scotland. 